My name is Greg Tilka. I am a professor of plant pathology and microbiology here at Iowa State University. My specialty is nematode biology and management. Soybean cyst nematode is ranked annually as the most damaging soybean pathogen in the United States and in Canada. Coupled with that, random surveys of many states in the Midwest that produce soybeans has shown that it's widespread in its distribution. Now, soybean cyst nematode for decades had been easily managed by farmers growing resistant soybean varieties. But the fatal flaw in that management strategy that we're experiencing now is that virtually everything has resistance genes from the one common breeding line, which is called PI-88788. It's pretty much any new variety that's being developed for farmers is going to contain SCN resistance and there's a 97% chance that resistance is from PI-88788. The remaining 3% is pretty much all a breeding line called Peking. PI-88788 resistance as well as the other sources of resistance work well initially because the nematodes in the natural population in the field don't have the genes that let them feed on the resistant varieties. But it's not absolute. In other words, in any given field, there are a few nematode worms that could feed on any of the types of resistance. But what's happened with prolonged use of PI-88788 resistance is that extreme minority of nematodes to start out with has been given a selective advantage through food and reproduction by farmers constantly having to grow that same source of resistance. So what might have been one in a million nematodes starting out with the ability to feed on PI-88788 resistance over 20 years of use becomes one in three or one in four. Iowa State University has evaluated cis nematode resistant soybeans for over 25 years. And we do this in farmers fields. And we not only evaluate them, the varieties for yield, but also for nematode control. Now a key part of that is that we first test the nematode in each one of those fields to see how well it reproduces on 88788. And I'm happy to say that what we saw in the decade of the 90s was really low level reproduction on 88788 resistant varieties. But starting in 2000, that line started to increase. Now that line looks like this, and we're up in this part of the graph where we're getting 50% reproduction on pure PI-88788, and obviously then varieties developed from that breeding line. And as a result of that, our yields in our experiments have taken this decrease as much as 14 bushels per acre in really high nematode counts. We're almost a victim of our own success. Resistance worked great for two decades and it was free. And now it doesn't work very well, but it's still free. It's, it's the standard price of a bag of seed, um, but there's no extra potential income for companies to exert the effort to bring other sources of resistance to market. But that's exactly what's needed. We need resistant varieties with sources of resistance other than PI-88788. I guess my biggest worry about soybean cyst nematode is when is the decrease in effectiveness of resistance going to stop? And if nothing changes, there's only one outcome for that and it's a bad outcome. Soybean yields are going to continue to decrease and so I'm doing everything I can to convince farmers that we are on a slow moving train heading towards a cliff. What a farmer needs to do currently is first find out if he or she has soybean cyst nematode in the fields that they're farming. And then secondly, they should get soil samples taken so they know what their egg count or population density is. What I do is tell farmers about all the options and I advise them to use as many of those that make sense. And so it would include not just growing 88788 resistant soybeans, but corn and using seed treatments, but also trying to find some of those varieties with the Peking source of resistance. And the more things a farmer uses to control SCN or any pest, 
the less likely any individual management tactic is going to suffer decreased performance.